This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, your hosts, Jerem Jordan and Jason Shepard. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Monday, August 23rd. We are a week away from class starting at BYU. To all our students in the uh, studio and working, just just relax. You have one more week. It's all good. Thanks for being here. Jason, what would it be like to be on a banner, to be featured on that? I don't know. When it happens, I'll let you know. Uh, Zach Wilson. We're not featured. Zach Wilson here, We're not okay? Zach Wilson. Um, that's for sure when you look at our bank accounts. Uh, he's featured on the NFL's Twitter banner, which is pretty cool. We're just trying to get outside the studio. Um, <laughs> there's a shot. Of uh, you know, from behind a women's soccer player, just legs in a soccer ball. That that's there instead of a picture of us. So we'll we'll work on that for us here. But Zach Wilson crushing it in the NFL, man, just crushing it. Did you get a chance to watch that yes. game? Yeah, yes. that was. I was live, like, yeah, like a lot like of us in, were, like, in the stadium. You were yeah, there. I went to Lambo. No, very nice. Uh, it was great, and to be able to have Kevin Harlan, you know, talking about Zach Wilson. They had Aaron Rodgers at some point of the, during the broadcast talking about Zach, and he performed fantastic. Yep. We're, we're going to talk a little bit more about Zach and the, uh, I guess, the, the, the attention he's getting right now, and mm-hmm. it's coming from everywhere. Yes, it is. Okay, here's the show lineup. Zach Wilson, as mentioned, has another great game. The national reaction, and we'll ask the question and discuss, is he the next Jimmer? We know a little more about the starting quarterback race here at the BYU, Aaron Roderick and Kalani Stockyweyan. My conversations uh, with starting left guard Sir Clark Barrington about this new offensive line. And Madden does Fred Warner dirty. Loaded <laughs> show. Let's get us some headlines. BYU football holding another scrimmage at Lavelle Edwards Stadium took place on Saturday. Afterwards, offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick says that he likes where his team is at. I like where we're at. Yeah, we're we're in good shape. We got a lot of work to do, though. We can't, we don't, we don't, we can't take any uh, any days off at all. We got to be, we got to keep progressing. We still have a lot of work to do, but I feel good about where we are, and I like our team. Um, we've got some some good skill players. We got a good offensive line, and and um, the quarterback position is is starting to become more clear. Uh, and so, I really like this team a lot. We will. Maybe know who the quarterback is today. Media oh, bill- today. oh, today. Oh, I'm just saying. Let's I mean, we, last week we said maybe Monday could be a midweek, Wednesday. Kind of yeah. There's media availability tomorrow. Will Hall we know or, by tomorrow. Darren Hall or the field. That's the question. Much more on that situation coming up in what's trending. Zach Wilson goes 9 for 11, 128 yards, two touchdowns, playing the first half for the Jets against the Packers at Lambeau Field. In a 23-14 Jets win. A rare Jets win. Take a picture. Uh, much more on Wilson coming up in what's trending. He Again, he is slaying it. By the way, your, your boy, Colin Cowherd, has the Jets with five wins. Five whole wins. More huh? than double what they had last year. <laughs> like five's a lot. All right. Offensive it's Cougar. It's a 17-game season, too. It's not like it's 16. <laughs> no. So, yeah. So, is that really it's basically like four? Down, yeah. Is it basically four? It's like four, yeah. Uh, Coogs in the NFL over the weekend. I'm going to focus on the offensive side of things. You would. Jerem, you're going to handle the defensive side in just a minute. Tyson Williams helped lead the Ravens to a win over the Panthers with 47 yards rushing and a touchdown. Ravens getting the victory 20-3. to Matt Bushman with a reception for nine yards in the Raiders win against the Rams. And Taysom Hill tonight, Monday night football, Saints taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars in their home stadium tonight. Jameis Winston, however, will be getting the start at quarterback for New Orleans. Defensive guys of note, Kai Nakua had a sack for the Niners. Troy Warner had three tackles for the Rams versus the Raiders. Zach Dodd, four stops for the Falcons versus the Dolphins. Kyrus Tonga continues to blow people up. He had a couple of tackles for the Bears against the Bills. Yeah. Uh, Isaiah Kafusi had a tackle, pass defended for the Colts. Your boy Zane Anderson had four tackles yeah, for the Chiefs. And Michael Davis had a tackle for the Chargers. And Chris Wilcox made two tackles for the Bucks against Chandon Herring and the Titans. I love when there's multiple guys in a game and they take pictures from opposing teams. Yeah. That's just fun. There's so many dudes. Look at the list. Hopefully a lot of these guys make the 53. That's coming up, uh, what, next Tuesday? Women's soccer, tough loss yep. for BYU women's soccer on the road at Auburn on Saturday. They lost 2-1. to one. Cougars back at Southfield Thursday night hosting USC. You can watch on BYU TV and the BYU TV app 10 p.m. Eastern time, so an hour later than most of the home games begin. Also, congratulations going out to Michaela Coulihan and Cameron Tucker, both 
named to the Herman Trophy watch list. coolahan has been a semifinalist last two years. Yes. Maybe she'll win it this year. Who knows? She's certainly That's in the mix. The Heisman. Uh, no question about side. it. Ashley Hatch scores again for the Washington Spirit in a 2-1 win versus the future team of Michaela Coolahan, the Orlando Pride. Hatch leads the league in WSL in goals with seven. Cougars at the Utah Open. Cole Ponich finishes as the low amateur at the Utah Open, finishing 13 under par, finished tied for ninth. Kirsten Fotu became the first woman to make the cut in the Utah Open in the 97-year history of the event. How wow. about that? Congratulations. Wow. She finished 59th with a score of three over par. Heck yeah, I love that. And Gabby Garcia Fernandez leads Puerto Rico to an upset over previously undefeated Cuba in the Norseka Continental Championship semifinal Saturday. 15 kills, two blocks, and an ace. Puerto Rico plays Canada for the championship tonight. Lots of headlines. Love it. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. All right, less than two weeks away from BYU against Arizona in Lost Wages, Nevada. The quarterback situation becoming clearer after Saturday's scrimmage. Here's Kalani Satake on the sitch. We feel really good about three quarterbacks, and, and um, uh, there's, there's, uh, we have an idea of what we're doing, and, and we... We can we can see it. So I, it's uh, I we thought that maybe one would be elevated, but all three have elevated their game, and um, we're, we're starting to see how this is going to shape up. And I just want to confirm it all with the film and and uh, communicate with the quarterbacks themselves, and then away we go. Okay, so a similar message to what we kind of had a week ago. Then there's this from offensive coordinator Aaron Roderick. We're going to go watch this film. We're going to talk about it as a staff and. And, uh, you know, I think it's, it's becoming pretty clear. And, I, if, you know, if, if you went and asked the players right now, they could probably tell you. But they, uh, you know, they, they've battled hard and they've all gotten better. And, but that picture is starting to clear up for us. So is that an invitation? Can we go up to the other players and ask them who the starting quarterback is right now? We're like, hey. Uh, hey, do yeah. you guys, can you just tell us? Who's the, who's the guy? Okay, so interesting sound bites. If all three quarterbacks have, have quoted elevated – does it matter who the starting quarterback is? Yes, it matters who the starting quarterback is. I don't want to live in a world where it doesn't matter who the starting quarterback is for a football team. I understand that they're all close. I understand that they all have certain things that they bring to the table. But obviously, at the end of the day, you have to go with the one that, that's the best. And look, does it matter? Yeah, I think it does. Because just look at last year. Going into last year, we kept being told that it's really, really close no. between Baylor and Zach Wilson. No, it wasn't. But but can but do you do we think that Zach Wilson we don't have that season if he's not the guy from the get go probably you know what I mean it's like it's like he needed to not know if he was the guy I I don't know but I mean I think that you're you're taking away some of what we saw from Zach if it's Baylor because of the, the doesn't have the same type of mobility and I think that that's why it matters with this because if if it's Baylor. And Jaron, and it does kind of feel like it's it's that for the starter and the backup. So if if it's going to be Baylor, then you're probably losing some of the mobility options within the offense. So I think it does matter because. But maybe you increase with but, what but, Baylor does in terms of in terms of the, of the passing. Out. Yes, yeah, yeah. and that's not saying one's better than the other. I'm just saying it matters because even though the offense overall stays the same, there are aspects of it that if it's Baylor, you do more of and less of. And if it's Jaron, you do more of and less of. So I think it does matter. Yeah, it matters. I, I agree with you. The The elevation comment is way too general a statement to glean a specific answer. Does that make sense? Yes, it matters. Uh, we've kind of been saying here for a long time, we thought that Jaron would win this battle, that Baylor would be close, and that Jacob would be close too. It's just that he's a freshman. Like, if this is an average year and you don't have two dudes who have already started a couple of games and won uh, games that mattered, we aren't having this same conversation. It changes the dynamic of it. But uh, the fact that Jacob Conover is here and COVID too, right? Like, what if I told you that these two were juniors not listed as sophomores and Conover was a freshman? Now you're thinking, oh, no brainer, you start the upperclassmen, right? But in this case, we're like, well, well, is Conover the guy? Um, it doesn't feel like Conover's the guy. There's no smoke there, right, to that fire. <laughs> We're not hearing, oh, Conover, Conover, maybe. Where we were kind of hearing, like, Wilson's pretty good going into 2018, but Mangum's going to win it by hair and get the first shot because he's a senior. 2017 was an abomination. 2015 was a really good year for Mangum as a freshman. Da, da, da. It's a different dynamic. So 
Yes, it matters. Um, I expect it to be Jaron Hall this week. Maybe you do too. I, I do too. Okay, and and we'll uh, we'll go from there. We'll go from there. Okay, topic two. Zach Wilson's performance was incredible. Jared. Yeah, it was. He, uh, get he, the win for the, U- the Utah Jets. I don't know why I said Utah Jets. <laughs> well, they basically are now. Well, I saw the J, and so Jazz <laughs> came into my head. So <laughs> for the New York Jets. Hey, Utah Jets. If they're good, they'll be the Utah Jets. <laughs> sure, why not? His performance in the New York Jets preseason win over the Packers had Cougar fans talking, but also the rest of the National Football League. And Wilson received rave reviews used on social media and it kind of reminded of us uh, of another former cougar uh, with mass appeal so is zach wilson the new jimmer yes and no yes in that he's the most talked about singular byu athlete since jimmer in a national conversation um you know more than fred warner more than Taysom hill um but Jimmer is a unique cat where he came from, the small school, the documentaries, the da da da. Like Zach's situation is a little different. So it's yes and no. It, like in who they are, they're different dudes, yes. different kind of dudes. But in the, hey, they're relevant and being conversed yes. at national level, yes. Yeah, I, I agree with you. It's yes and no. It's yes because of the way people are reacting in the moment right now. I, I don't know if you, as long as it's positive, I'm retweeting it as soon as I know it's about Zach Wilson. Like, that's the way it was with Jimmer. If it was something about Jimmer and it was something positive, and most of it was, I'm just retweeting it. And that's, it's, that's kind of where they're similar. So, so you're gauging the <laughs> retweetability of the reaction. Well, it's, part of, it's part of it. Yeah. But I also will say, no, I don't know if Zach is to the level of Jimmer because – and again, if you weren't around for that and don't know what that time was like, what what we're seeing with Zach is not to that level. At least it doesn't feel yeah, to agree. me. In terms of Jimmer Mania was, it was nothing like I have ever experienced in my life in terms of covering somebody and, and mass appeal. Yeah. Now, Zach has mass appeal within the NFL. Jimmer was just one of those guys – that seemed to be everywhere, and everybody was talking about him. I, I don't think Zach's at that level yet, and I certainly could, depending on how this season goes. But but right now, I don't know if it's to that level. But in terms of in the NFL sphere, he's he's one of the darlings. There's no question about it. Let's talk about relatability, okay? Zach, it's, it's chronicled. He, he comes from a family who is affluent. That's not as relatable generally. I'm not saying it's a negative. I'm just saying it's not as relatable. Jimmer didn't grow up in that kind of situation. 6'2", white kid basketball player. That's different kind of relatability than 6'3", uh, quarterback, right? It's, it's different in their positions, in their demographics, in their makeup, right, as well. Um, but it's all good. Like, if Zach leads the Jets to a Super Bowl in the next three years, we will see Wilson Mania. Uh, this year. Right? Psh, get out of here. Unfortunately, they would lose to the Chiefs in the AFC Championship game, and then we would go on to win the title. There you go. Okay. We've got to run through some of the reaction over the weekend. Okay, let's walk through this. At Billy Hot Takes, who writes for Barstool Sports. <laughs> if Zach Wilson wins the Super Bowl for the Jets, I will convert to Mormonism. He hey, writes about that. Let's save this. <laughs> Because as soon as that happens, we can send a couple of guys over. Yeah, we know a few friends. <laughs> Hashtag safety zone. Louis Lapuahu. Just like that, Zach's mission has been more productive than mine. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Sala on Zach Wilson. His process is light years ahead of what a normal rookie's process should be. Yep. NFL Network quoting Aaron Rodgers. He can throw the heck out of it. They spent practice in the week together. And I appreciate him using cool. heck coming from BYU. Yep. Then we can actually read him. Uh, BYU Barstool. This is my favorite tweet of the whole weekend. It's a picture of Zach kind of smirking at a, an offensive lineman. Zach looking at all the Coastal Carolina players currently living in their mom's basements. <laughs> That's great. We don't endorse that tweet, but we read it. Oh. Robbie McCombs uh, took less than a half for Zach Wilson to be the number two trending topic in the U.S. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Chad Johnson, y'all see Zach Wilson, though? Pretty good. PFF, Zach Wilson, 137.7 passer rating this preseason, first among all quarterbacks. And last but not least, our stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. Ooh, the most interesting. Still getting it. Uh, Wilson, 5 for 5, 94 yards and a touchdown on throws of 10 plus yards downfield. Okay, according to NFL Next Gen Stats, ESPN Stats, and NFL. He's doing what he did last year. I don't want to overreact to preseason games, but he is doing as well as he could possibly do 
which is very exciting. Yes, and we, we, we missed one of the tweets. Kendrick Perkins, who people know <laughs> is former NBA guy, now just kind of throws out hot takes. I find him extremely entertaining, um, and I think he's great. He tweeted out, I know it's preseason, but I tried to warn you all about how elite Zach Wilson is. Oh, the E word. Don't mind me, though, and carry on. Carry on. And carry, that's how he ends all yep. tweets. Yep. I, he cracks me up, and so I just found it funny that he was tweeting about Zach Wilson, too. Everybody is, man. The uh, whole world is tweeting a, about Zach Wilson. It's a, well, not the whole world. But it's, it's preseason, so uh, there's that. Just you know, But he's, he's doing really, really well, which is exciting. It's going to be fun. So I have NFL Sunday tickets so I can watch the Seahawks no matter what. I'm going to be watching every Jets game. Can, I have your, can, I have, can we share? I'll give you some money if you'll share your, your login. Yeah. yeah, sure. We, we have this on camera. He said yes. Yeah, it's fine. Spence, I don't know if I can go three ways, though. Come on. Uh, our question of the day, is Zach Wilson the new Jimmer? Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Weigh in on uh, Friendster, MySpace, and uh, yeah, I can't. Uh, and Meerkat. <laughs> and Meerkat. It's my favorite. Meerkat Face- is my favorite. Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Kip Kent. <laughs> R- related to Roy Kent? On Twitter. Not until his name becomes widely used as a verb. You got jimmered. It was everywhere at the height of jimmer mania. I haven't sur- heard anyone say you got zacked just yet. Maybe in time. That's true. It is true. The, uh, teach me how to jimmer. Uh, there are a few things. You need a dance. You need Look, a Look, let's not pretend that his name being jimmer didn't help out the situation. True. There's a brand. Yes, uh, it is unique. I don't know that Zach will ever get to sort of the unique status of that, but he could actually become... Uh, I mean, well, I, I think basketball is more global as well. I think that affects this conversation. We're like, it I went, don't know if I agree it with went that. international. Like, Jimmer went international. Yeah, there, well, there's no question. Zach Wilson's not going to go international to the same degree. They are playing in London this year. Fo- oh, cool, one game. Because football is an American thing, right? I wonder if uh, maybe we send a crew over to jolly old England. Hey, I'll go to a Chelsea game or two. That'd be fun. Wow. That, that, back, that you, backfired you on me. You didn't see that coming. Didn't, did I, I, I should have, but I didn't. <laughs> All right, coming up, did EA Sports do Fred Warner wrong? And the answer is yes. Wait till you see the photo. Sir Clark Barrington of the left guard addresses us. What this offensive line is going to look like this year. This is BYU Sports Nation. Those who leave the most meaningful legacy seem to be the ones who never intended to. The same person who loses himself seems to be the same that finds himself. And why? Well, they give the best of who they really are with no thought of return. Find a cause you can put your heart into, my son, in which to lose yourself. I started the Deseret Donor Advised Fund for this reason. Because in the end, my greatest legacy is you. They prefer to be bringing the heat, getting set for success, demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork for BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again, and you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Let's kick off AFR on BYU TV. What they did in that fourth quarter was not unexpected in my book. Everyone did their job perfectly, and it resulted in obviously a touchdown. Who knew that he had these kind of hands? And right at the snap of the football, they both go right downhill. And and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, did, he, he knocked them down pretty quickly. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. 
After further review, looks at the 2021 Difference Makers this week. You watch as Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler, and David Nixon break down the film AFR. Available Tuesday on the BYU TV app at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Live in Studio B with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. Jeremy Jordan alongside Jason Shepard. Thanks for hanging out with us. We like to joke that uh, offensive lineman Clark Barrington's name is more like an earl or a lord than an offensive lineman. A duke, maybe? Maybe a duke. The Dukies! He's been super consistent on the offensive line the last couple of years. He's an NFL prospect. Here's my conversation after Saturday's scrimmage with Clark Barrington. Clark, we've never spoken. So, hi, I'm Jerem. How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm doing great. Yep. Listen, I got a, uh, a great taste and piece of what you're like in a mic'd up. Uh, yeah. social media. <laughs> Not, you seem like a fun guy. Most of the time, the offensive linemen have a ton of personality. So I think it's going to be a fun conversation. You seem yeah, like yeah. a cool dude. Yeah, it should be good. I had a lot of fun doing that. So it was a good time. Okay, so for those who don't know, you're one of the more veteran, stalwart, solid pieces on this team that maybe people don't know a ton about because if you pay attention to the offensive line, you've been there for a minute for two seasons at left guard doing your thing, right? So what's yeah. it like going into year three for you as like a seasoned vet now? Um, you know, it's it's different. Um, you know, it's it's different from last year, you know, having all the old old guys around and and being the young guy on the line and, and all that stuff and looking up to them. And, and it, I, I just have taken it as an opportunity to kind of, you know, fill those shoes, you know, Brady, Channon, you know, Tristan, Kiefer, all, all of those guys, they were, they were great dudes and, and great teachers and just helping us improve each and every day. And so, you know, I've just tried to take that, you know, upon myself and help, help the younger guys, you know, better understand their role, better understand, you know, the technique, the scheme, or whatever I can can do to help them better understand those things. So. And uh, correct me if I'm wrong, you've been the left guard uh, for, what, the past two seasons, right? Left? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've been uh, left guard pretty much for the past two seasons. First season, I was moved around a little bit, left and right, bounced around, but, yeah, it's, it's been at guard the, the past two seasons. Are you tall for a guard? Six six feels like a tall guard. Typically, those that's like a tackle size. Am I off on that? I I honestly don't know. Not on our team because our tackles are what six ten, six eight. <laughs> so, massive, dude. Yeah. So no, I, I feel like I, I'm good size for for guys. Yeah, you're a big dude. Six six uh, three zero two. Is that still the case right now? Yeah. Yep. Nice. It's weird when you're a football player, people know your weight. Like in regular yeah. life, that's not poker, <laughs> right? Is that weird? Right. Right. Is that weird that people know your weight? It, uh, I don't know. It's it's been a lifelong thing, so so I'm used to it. <laughs> okay, on this team, last year the offensive line was incredible, and it was really fun to see three of those starters get into the NFL. One drafted in the third round with Brady Christensen, first team All American, right? Yeah. Um, at left tackle, Tristan Hodge at, at right guard, and Shannon Herring at right tackle. Tell us about their replacements, uh, guys like Harris Lachance and Blake Freeland. And Joe Tukuafu and, and and others. Yeah, for sure. I, I I think it's you know the guys that we have to to replace those that have left. You know they're they're ready. You know they're they're ready for that job. They great thing about last year, tons of guys got a lot of experience, and so you know each and every one of those guys have game game experience that, that are going to be filling those those spots, and and so we're, we're ready to roll and, and ready to you know continue to compete at, at the highest level. So. How did uh, scrimmage number two at the stadium go today? It was good. It was it was a lot of fun, good energy, you know, just good competition between the offense and defense. Every, overall, it was, it was a great day. I've always chuckled. Uh, I think it's James Empey that said it a couple times where he said, honestly, we don't know who the quarterback is until we hear them behind us. Right. Uh, yeah. what, so what's that experience like on the field of not knowing who the guy is, even in a game? You know, it, it's it's kind of – normal I guess I, I don't know it, these guys have been with us for a long time you know whoever's back there great you know I, I love Baylor love you know love Jaron love <clears throat> Con- Conover and, and they're all just great dudes you know what I mean and, and they got great talent and so whoever's back there we're gonna still sling it around run the ball around and, and we're gonna do our thing so is there like an ideal voice for a quarterback for you guys to actually hear him above kind of the noise is it like more high pitched is easier or lower or something? Not really. No, you just kind of tune in and, and, and you'll be able to hear it. Yeah. What's, what's the loudest venue you've ever played in? Um, 
I did not play in the game, but I was present at the at the game. It was Tennessee. That one was that one was crazy for sure. That's what I've heard. Even the fans were like, it was crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it was it was a good experience. What's Lavelle Edwards Stadium going to be like this year with fans again? Because you guys played with some fans in a couple of games, but right. man, it's going to be different, especially that first one, right? Utah and Randall. For sure. It'll, it'll be a good time. It'll be, it'll be nice, you know, to have the, the fans there, have them bring their energy and, and we'll continue to bring our energy on the sidelines. So it'll be a good time. Clark, we're two weeks out from the season. Has that settled in your mind as a reality and, and what's left to do? You know, I, I think what's left to do is just continue doing what, what we've been doing, you know, preparing like the games coming up because it is, you know, getting ourselves right and, and doing the things that we need, we know we need to be doing and just continually improving each and every day. So. Daryl Funk is new as the offensive line coach. What's it been like with him? He's got a great name, right? Yeah. Yeah. He, he's a great dude. Um, you know, he's brought, he's brought a lot of, a lot of good skills and a lot of knowledge with him and, and we, we, as an O-line, have really enjoyed being with him this, this start of the season. What's he like? Because he's a super vet. He's coached against BYU a bunch. He said you guys remind him of a Big Ten offensive line from his days at Michigan. Right. He was across the field against BYU in 2015, so he, right. he got a taste, right? But that's that's quite the comparison. Big Ten known for the big physical lines. Yeah. yeah it, it, it's, it's been a fun time with him, you know. He's m mostly in person, you know. He's he's even keel, you know, good guy, just there kind of, you know, mellow and, and, you know, just chill, you know, but, but when it, when it needs to happen, we'll, he'll get up in, in our face and, and let us know, Hey, let's step it up. Hey, let's do some things. And, and he's just, he's just been a great addition to, to the team. So we're really loving him. With him. Now you're at BYU, but you're from Spokane. Did you yeah. ever like the Zags men's hoops? Uh, I did all growing up. I don't blame you. You're in Spokane, yeah. man. <laughs> you know, it's, you, you got to root for them when you're living there. So, listen, I'm a Gonzaga fan when they're not playing BYU. I, I, yeah, just, think, right. I just think they're great. Are you? Have you transitioned to a BYU basketball fan? Um, I, you have to. You know, <laughs> I, you have to. You have to. I, I, I do love BYU through and through, and and so you know, I, I'm a big BYU fan now. Am I reading into the um too much? Yeah, yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put any words in my mouth there. Uh, 2020 was a fun game, though, right? Right before sure. the pandemic? That was crazy. Yep. yep. No, that's awesome. Okay, so this team this year, obviously last year was a schedule that you couldn't control. You had to play it. You guys were awesome. It was so fun. It was amazing, like a banner year in BYU history. This schedule is certainly different. Do you have to prepare differently at all when you know that, okay, playing the average Power 5 team – can be they can be a little deeper than the average group of five team or whatever right is there anything different about your prep i don't think so you know personally you got to go in and prepare for for the game as if if you don't prepare then then they're going to kick your butt because that, that's how it is in football if you're if you don't go in prepared you're, you're going to get your butt handed to you and so you know you go in you go in you know each and every week prepare yourself the best you can and have that confidence that you did prepare well enough to to go and perform on let's talk about let's talk about your brother campbell uh people think he's going to be a baller as well he's, yeah. he's fine for some pt this year what's what's he like what positions is uh he going to play you know they they have him playing all five positions right now he's kind of that 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 utility player so you know he, he's gonna be able to fill some holes you know if we need him to and 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 he'll continue to step it up and continue to to grind you know he's one of those tough guys uh, you, can, you, you know, he's, he's just going to go in there and get his job done. It may not look the prettiest at times, but, hey, he'll, he'll go in there and throw his head in there. So, Do I have this right that your dad, uh, Sean, and mom, is it Jackie? Did they play yeah. baseball and basketball at Arizona, the first yeah. opponent? Yeah, they did. Okay. What's that diamond dynamic like? Because they're certainly rooting for the Cougs for you guys, but, hey, the alma mater. For sure. For sure. I, I don't know. All growing up. Arizona was kind of the school we all wrote, rooted for growing up. And, and, you know, since we've been here, you know, the parents kind of left it in the past and said, yeah, it was a good time at Arizona, but, hey, we're Cougars now, so let's go let's go beat Arizona. But Don't let them do a half-and-half half shirt or anything weird like that, no, right? No, no that, that's not allowed, no. No, come on, man. <laughs> um, how, how was your mission in Uganda? That's certainly a more exotic one. Yeah, it was it was exotic for sure. It was an adventure every day. Um, 
you know, probably one of the greatest blessings in my life for sure. Learned a lot, grew a lot, you know, personally, spiritually, lost a lot physically, <laughs> lost 50, 50 pounds that I, that I had to gain back once I got home, but it, it was well worth the experience. So it, it was a great time. How'd you gain it back? The seafood diet, see it and eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot of lobster, just no. Know, just yeah, you, you yeah. see the food on the plate, you, you eat it all. So okay, yep. okay. <clears throat> that's awesome. Well, congratulations on the success so far. You've been a super awesome piece of BYU the last couple of years. I'm looking forward to. It, it, it's weird because you're listed as a, a sophomore. Are you a yeah. junior? Like what are what are you? With COVID, it's all weird, right? Yeah, with COVID, I could be three different things. So uh, we'll just see how the season pans out, and, and we'll go from there. And hopefully you're a high draft pick and you follow the Brady Christensen path, right? That'd be awesome. Yep, that, that's awesome. the goal. Okay, Clark, appreciate the time, man. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thanks. Clark Barrington. I love uh, the offensive line. They always have big personalities. Lost 50 pounds on his mission. Parents played at Arizona. That's legit. Gonzaga basket. He's got a lot going on there. I, I got to talk with him during media day, during the web chats. He was he was really fun to talk to. I, I really enjoyed talking with Clark. He was great. Yeah, he's awesome. And he's going to be pancaking fools in how many days? Countdown to the Wildcats. Well, days. That's so- did we just turn 12 into like eight syllables? Well, <laughs> we did three syllables, but yes. Okay. 12 days, man. Let's go. It is a it is a Joe Beck away. Thank you from and a Gary Shidey and a Gary Shidey. But I'm just trying to you know honor the past. That's true. I love me some Gary Shidey. Although Joe Beck's 15 years ago. <laughs> Holy shnikes! I know it's been a while. It's we're getting older. Mostly you. Uh... All right, coming up. We would never overreact to scrimmages. However, we're gonna overreact to scrimmage highlights. Let's go. And which Cougar had the best weekend in the NFL? Not named Zacharias Wilson. This is BYU Sports Nation. Wait, that's a card without Spencer Linton in the background? What? If I got hurt and was laid up at home, I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. One thing Mountain America has learned over nearly a century of helping members achieve their financial dreams is that we are stronger together. We achieve great things together. And while we are still here to serve you, we know together feels different right now. It might take some time, but we're looking forward to the day when we can gather together again. We're still here, guiding you forward. Valentine Clark. And I'm Richie T. Every weekday morning on The Lisa Show, we share fun, inspirational, and relatable ways to make your life better. Think of us like uh, breakfast for your ear holes. Yeah, think of us like that. That's The Lisa Show, weekday mornings on BYU Radio. Start your day in a positive way. You don't want to start your day in a negative no, way. we got too much of that. Yeah, let's be positive. For you sure. positively want to start your day in a positive way. Absolutely. Nailed it. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. On the latest Deep Blue podcast, Jerem Jordan talks with All-American soccer player Michaela Coulihan about her upbringing, getting drafted, but staying at BYU for two more seasons, and what the 2021 team is capable of doing. Listen to it on the BYU Radio app or where podcasts are found. She's a superstar, man. Um, She was picked 14th in the NWSL draft. That's only because they didn't know whether she was going to go or not. If she, had she declared, she would have been a top three pick. They wanted her to come and be with the team and the club so bad. 
BYU is so lucky that yep. she decided to come back and play. Yep. Enjoy the time with Michaela Coulihan and company this fall. Okay, he is Jason. I'm Jerem. This is BYU Sports Nation. Let's whip it. Good Whip Round is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management, tackling America's most challenging shipping problems. All right. Which Cougar not named Zach Wilson in the NFL had the best preseason weekend, my friend? Kind of cool. Had a sack yep. on a safety blitz. I like that. Kyrus Tonga continues to be consistent, but yep. a defensive lineman gobbling up two blockers isn't as sexy. Tyson Williams had a touchdown, 47 yards. He looks like he might be the number three in Baltimore. I'm going to say Tyson Williams. I, despite what you said, I'm going with Kyrus Tonga. Mm. And, and now, because I, I was watching part of that broadcast and. Uh, Adam Amin, who, Adam Amin. who was the play-by-play guy, homie. they kept gushing about Kairos Tonga. And the Looks fact- like you got my text. <laughs> <laughs> I love that he starting nose tackle for the Chicago yep. Bears defense. That's, that's saying something, because that defense is already very, very good. But they just continue to rave about it. Even when the, uh, and now I'm blanking on who they were playing, oh, the Bills, mm-hmm. the running backs would pick up yardage. They said, but look at Kairos Tonga. I mean, he wasn't going Kairos' way. So I actually think it was Kairos, the way they were really, really pumping him up. It's good analysis if they're identifying the block eater, right? Right. Because Kairos may not get a ton of stats, but he's having a massive influence. Okay, what induced a stronger reaction? Fred Warner being 21st on the NFL Top 100 players list or his uh, Madden not likeness? Okay, I'll go. You, I'll take you through my thought process on okay. these. Fred Warner being 21st. <laughs> that is awesome. I can't believe it. Then when I saw that, I'm like, what in the world is going on with Madden? That's not Fred. Like, un- unless he doesn't, unless they don't have permission to use his likeness. Maybe that's good. Th- they have to just go with, with a, a, a generic face. I don't that's know. not Fred but Warner. at no point is that anything like Fred Warner's face. They did him dirty, as I said. <laughs> that's not good. So stronger reaction is Madden, but props to Fred for being 21st. He was 70th last year. Yes. It was cool to be in the top 100. Yeah. Um, only BYU Cougar on the list, correct? Only BYU Cougar in the top 100? I believe so, yes. I don't think Taysom Hill is on it or anybody else. So, oh, yeah, 20, cool. 21st, that is awesome. Yeah. yeah, if Taysom starts this year and does well, maybe he's on the top 100 next year. All right, staying with Fred Warner. Fred Warner is the best BYU Cougar in the NFL since. Because he was all pro, I'm going to say Chad Lewis, what I, who I believe is the last all pro player from BYU in the year 2000. We're, we're on the same page. It's Chad Lewis. That's yeah. kind of exactly where I went because of the accolades. Yeah, and, and we're in a situation now where I think uh, Fred is the best NFL player, period. But I think that we're going to have a couple other challengers, hopefully, in the next couple of years. Maybe not at the all-pro level, uh, but kind of the, hey, they're pro bullish. The, 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 a very close second, I was going to say KBN, because obviously yes. both playing linebacker and obviously Kyle with a couple Super Bowl rings. Yes. So, but, but Chad Lewis is where I went because of the accolades. Yeah, the, all, like, don't be deceived. Pro Bowl's cool, but all-pro is legit. Yes. That's the best stuff. Okay, BYU soccer players Michaela Coulihan and Cameron Tucker on the Herman Trophy watch list, the Heisman of women's soccer. Coulihan was a semi-finalist the last two years. Would you take Coulihan or the field to win it? Uh, I absolutely think that she has a, a, a more than legit chance of winning. I'm going to say, I'm going to take Michaela Coulihan. Oh, I like it. I, I expect a, a massive season for her. She obviously had two goals in the in the first game win we're, we're showing you some of the highlights right now against ohio state i'm going to take michaela Coulain. I, I big things are coming for her in this team this year i would love that they haven't given the trophy to a non-power five school since 2005 christine St- sinclair portland so well maybe a we'll wcc see. team winning the national championship changes that yeah perhaps right perhaps all right this is this, this one hurt me over the weekend. Oh. It hurt me. Oh. Um, a leaked Spider-Man No Way Home trailer came out. Okay. I avoided it. I did not watch it. Okay. Did you watch the leaked Spider-Man trailer? I didn't even know that it was leaked. So, no. I am waiting. And now we watch it. Go ahead, roll it. We have a clip. <laughs> yeah. By the way, Sony and Marvel on line two, <laughs> they have tried to shut down everything that we had it. We have two lines? Line one. We have landlines? We do have landlines. This is like it's a, a rotary phone. Business. They're calling it. Yeah. Uh, by the way, f- funny thing. So you and I, for the symbol for phones, do this. Yes. Kids nowadays do this. Totally. Different. Really? Totally different. They don't do this. They're not I, used I to would. a phone being like that. It's flat. Ask your kids how they do the phone symbol. 
But I would think this is universally though no. would be no, fun. No, we're old. We're old. It's old. No, this is old. <laughs> this and then waiting for it to go back and then this <laughs> waiting for it to go back. Un untangling the cord. Oh yeah, no, that's old. I remember. I remember. <laughs> you know, you had to have the extra long cord so you could walk room to room. You thought you thought like this is never gonna get any better. Than you're this. covering it. You like jump on someone else's call in your house and you try not to breathe into it, and, but you want to listen. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like you can hear the little click. I don't know what I took us off the rails. I apologize. <laughs> Let's go to break. I am excited though for the new Spider-Man trailer, but I'm waiting. I want to see the full thing. Yeah. I want to see it with you're, with completed effects. You're bringing it back. I I. Why? Bringing it back. I was talking about Spider Man. No, not... you're bringing it back to the top of the hand. Yeah, I'm wow. bringing it back. We're off. The... It's over. Let's just go to break. All right, let's Segment's go. To... done. All right, let's go to break. All right, just a couple of uh, Cougar Legends hanging out. That's coming up. Overreactions to scrimmage highlights, Spider Man previews, and more. And the wide receiver in the mix we haven't been talking about. Aaron Roderick's got a guy he mentioned Saturday. This is BYU Sports Nation. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. My name is Spencer Finnegan. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary, and there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake and Greg Rubel. When I was younger, I was a better dancer. Don't show any more dancing on here. Okay, good. <laughs> I think we've developed some really good habits the last couple weeks and, and looking to step it up again. A lot of great things can happen when they care. Not bad. That's good stuff. Hey. Yay. Yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. On the latest BYUSN right now, who on BYU football would be the fun dad? And what about the fun uncles? One of the newest dads on the team is Jared Hall, and he's giving Kiki all of the info or the 411. Mm -hmm. Catch all episodes on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Studio B on Monday, August 23rd. We are 12 days away from the season. I can't believe it. Okay, let's uh, check out some uh, scrimmage highlights from Saturday, and let's overreact to them. Presented by Tim Daly Nissan, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. We're going to play a highlight or a soundbite, and we're going to overreact to it. <laughs> Number one, this Tyler Algier run. Okay, they're not tackling him, Jason. So what do we what do we think of this? Okay. Well, I th we need to see it from the beginning. Yes, yeah, so look at that cut. The cut. Mm. You know what that cut tells me? Breakout player. <laughs> That's Peyton Wilgar, who's going to tackle him for loss, by the way, uh, if they're actually tackling him. Although that cut was legit. Look, a stop and start change so, direction on a dime? So that the overreaction is Tyler Algier will average five yards per carry this year because uh, he'll be able to double avoid. that. Double that? Okay, that, now that's an overreaction. <laughs> Highlight two, Puka Nakua, okay? He's been out uh, limited with injury. He's been in practice, but not full. Oh, in the scrimmage. Oh, making catches. Look at that. Sideline catch in double coverage. Making it look easy. Okay. Look at that. It's a nice ball. Couldn't tell who the quarterback was. Yeah, could not was. tell who was throwing the pass. The Jaren, it looks like Jaron Hall. Okay, Puka, two-handed, into the chest. I like it. Uh, overreaction, 1,000-yard uh, receiver. Puka Nakua this year. 1,000-yard receiver. 
Double that. Okay. okay. <laughs> you know what? You're out of line. <laughs> highlight number three. Gunnar Romney's touchdown. Okay. Now, this, this might be the highlight of fall camp. Look at this. Oh, my goodness. Whoop. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Chris Berman. Because of how deep the cut was on this oh. cornerback, <laughs> I'm not going to even name said cornerback for fear of embarrassment. Okay. That cut. I'm look ex- at that. I'm ex- Stop and start. Go. I'm excited Change about. Change of direction. I'm excited about this cornerback. I'm not going to mention his name. You can look him up if you want. Gunnar Romney. Bang. This reminds me of. Utah State into the end zone, uh, 2018, Zach Wilson's first touchdown throw. Overreaction, Gunnar Romney will lead the team in receiving touchdowns after being a guy that had two last year. He'll have 10. Here's my overreaction. He will not have a single catch down at the one. (laughs) That's my – that is it. Not a single one. Not a single one. chances are he won't. Well, then I'm going to be right. Okay. And you're going to owe me something. What? You'll shave your head. <laughs> Highlight four. Hobbs Nyberg. This is this is uh, the best catch uh, from the highlights. And a up. nice pass, too, from Jaron Hall, I believe. Okay. okay. We read a lot into who gets the highlights. Okay. Oh, where's the Jacob Conover pass? Oh, let's see some Samson's Nakua. Oh, this the, uh, uh, overreaction. Ho- Hobbs Nyberg has uh, 15 grabs this year. Look, we don't need to overreact. We have, we have Aaron Roderick talking about Hobbs Nyberg. Uh, Hobbs Nyberg had a really good day. Yeah, he, he did some good things, and he's proving uh, to be a good offensive player. You know, last year he, like, I didn't even know who the guy was, and all of a sudden he was in a game catching a punt. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, literally, like, I, he, and then, um, and he became our full-time punt returner and did a great job. And then this spring he started proving to us that he could play receiver. And then he had a good good scrimmage today to the point where he's in the mix. You know, I wouldn't wouldn't be surprised at all if if uh, we see him playing some receiver in games this year as well as being our punt returner. Okay, uh, Hobbs and Sean. Nope, Hobbs Nyberg. Uh, he played baseball. He did. I I know I know Hobbs well. He had a couple brothers play baseball, including Chunner. Helped call some of his games. Dad played receiver. Brent, I think, um, in the '90s. He played in the Miami game against uh, you know with BYU in 1990. So yeah, Hobbs Nyberg. He's, uh, he's in the mix. Let's go. Okay, highlight five. Some pass breakups, baby. Let's go. Let's okay, Baylor Romney. Uh, Shaman Willis, Jamal's kid. That was on Puka Nakua, by the way. And then there's Jacob Robinson. Well, and let's make sure that we're showing, like, one of the pass breakups was a pass from Keenan Ellis. Baylor. Yep. One was from Jaron. Okay, there's, we're, now we're on repeat. Okay. What do you think of these PBUs? What's the overreaction? BYU will not give up a reception all year. Oh, my gosh. Is that overreaction uh, enough? I don't think we have goggles big enough for that reaction. <laughs> uh, BYU is, uh, yeah. you know, top 20 in completion percentage defense or something. I guess that's fine. <laughs> Shooting for the stars. All right, last one. Neil Pau, who honestly is yeah. probably not getting his uh, just due, uh, and, and we're probably not talking about him enough in terms of what he's capable of this season. Couple of nice catches here. One from Jaron Hall there, yep. tiptoeing on the sideline. Oh, that throws a little high from Jaron on the money from Baylor. Uh, that the overreaction. Neil Powell will be the number one receiver in one of these three yards, catches, or touchdowns. I think we kind of think like, yeah. oh, he's like the number three or four. It's like mm, maybe he's the number one. Maybe he's the number two. He's a seasoned vet. We're like, why wouldn't he fill those shoes? I don't think it would be crazy if he's. It's not an overreaction. Number saying. two in in anything. receiving yards, maybe? In anything. Yeah. I, I, and C- Coach Roderick even talked about, and he's mentioned this a couple of times, Neil Pau is not getting mentioned as much as some of the other guys are. And he says, all, Neil is, has been phenomenal. He was phenomenal last year, and we expect really big things from him. Now, Puka is a different kind of receiver than BYU's had. Correct. Like, he is, he is a next-level kind of guy. Gunnar Romney is going to step into the Dax Milne shoes, which honestly, before Dak, uh, Gunnar got hurt, Gunnar was having a better year than Dax. Dax occupied that space and took advantage and did a really nice job when Gunnar got hurt for a couple of games. Those guys are, were a really nice one two punch there with Neil being the three. I love the options BYU has. I'm stoked, man. Yeah, there are so many weapons around whoever becomes the quarterback. And then you, you, Throw in the fact that you've got Tyler Algier and Lopini Katoa and others at the running back position. A, an offensive line, I think, that's just going to get better as the season goes on because you've got so many guys that have had reps before already. 
plus some returning starters. I am excited. I am as excited about this offense this year as I have been in the last five years. I'm more excited and about la- it than I was going into last year. Well, but we I didn't, didn't realize know. last didn't year was going to be what last year was. Correct. Right? So it, it's more about, like, obviously, uh, anticipation and excitement are, are born of expectation, of personnel that you know, familiarity. Like, where you don't know what you're going to get, you're a little nervous, you're not as excited per se. The idea of it's exciting. Like, we know Dallin Holker is going to be a baller. There's not a question. We know Isaac Rex is going to continue to be a baller. Then Puka Nakua out of high school was one of the most sought-after receivers in the country. Samson Nakua is really good at Utah, obviously. Gunner has had a tremendous uh, career at BYU so far. Neil Powell is super solid. It's like, there's six dudes that you trust. Speaking of Dallin Holker, did you hear Kalani's comment about Dallin Holker? He's like, I wish everybody would have gone on whatever mission he went on because Dallin has come back and is is pretty darn close to where he was when he left. The Fui Vakapuna right. Regiment. <laughs> he comes yes. back, he's like, are you bigger? <laughs> are you, wait a minute, are you better after taking yeah. two years off? Like, what in the world? Then it becomes that advantage that other coaches talk about. We may finally actually, actually get that two tight end set that we have talked about for like six years. Yes. And not just two tight ends, but two highly capable tight ends. Yes. Good luck trying to decide which one to go after. Yeah, like... <laughs> Gosh, BYU's running, what, 12 personnel uh, with just Tyler Algier back there and Holker and Rex, and then, what, two receivers? Good luck cracking the two deep on the two, re- the two receivers if you're running two tight ends somewhat consistently. There are options uh, to be very multiple for Aaron Roderick. It's going to be awesome. All right, coming up is Zach, speaking of Zach Wilson, the new Jimmer. Speaking of for death. Continue to weigh in. Thank you for clarifying which uh, Jimmer. Although in church I heard someone go, Taze him, come here. And Super Bowl winning rise and shout outs. This is BYU Sports Nation. Jason's in your award? This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan, at the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford, think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. because you are a force to be reckoned with in your sports. I want to win at everything. I just don't want to lose. I'm a girl from Oklahoma. I'm built for this. I'm just going to leave it all out there. This is the first time that we've ever combined summer and winter sports in a single season. Are you ready to click in and hold on tight? Physically, I can do it, but mentally, I'm just terrified. The pressure right now is insane. Everything's possible. We just have to keep trying. Every moment matters. I totally feel like Superwoman. The athletes who win season four could possibly be seen as the greatest all-round champion ever. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. That's right. BYU Sports Nation is available on demand via the free BYU TV and BYU Radio. Download the podcast. Just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. While you're there, subscribe, rate, and review. Our question of the day, Zach Wilson, the new Jimmer. You guys are weighing in. Let's uh, read some posts here. At Mr. Underscore Notham on Twitter. I hope not. I don't want Zach to play football in China after a short NFL career. Aye. That one's... True but stinks. That one hurts. At Nate underscore wall 25 on IG. I think it will be 
he will be in the NFL with Jimmer was at BYU. We hear about the upside all the time, how much the NFL loves it. After his preseason game last Saturday, the media is definitely on board. I don't think you need Blue Goggs to say that Zach Wilson will have a better NFL career than at BYU. Interesting. Okay, statistically, it yeah, will be know. a challenge. I don't challenge. honestly know how you can compare those two. If Zach Wilson makes the, the playoffs once with the Jets. It's it's, then it, then it's it's like hard to compare, but the NFL is so then that is popular. A, that is a bigger accomplishment than yes. what was accomplished because with Jets. Well, because Jets. Because Jets and because it's it's professional. Yeah. It's the NFL. Like if Jimmer was the leading scorer on a playoff team, that's kind of what we're talking about. Yeah. Kind of. Well, even then, I would Jets say still have NFL greater spot. than NBA in terms of sort of the popularity. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, Troy Sylvester on uh, Facebook. Among the BYU faithful, sort of, but the huge difference is at the pro level, it looks like the Jets are building their approach around Zach. Jim will never get, uh, got a shot to play his game in the NBA. This is true. True, yeah. This, Even going to Sacramento, that was not catered to him. It was never catered to him except for BYU, and he thrives. So right. The, like, Jimmer, don't get me the wrong way in how I say this. Jimmer Fredette's basketball game is needy, meaning he needs a high usage rate to be successful. Yes. A lot of teams aren't willing to give that up. You know who is? Uh, the Shanghai Sharks. Um, you know who wasn't? Uh, Panathinaikos. Because they were giving even minutes to a lot of guys, and it just wasn't catered to him. So that makes sense, right? Um, and from I see both sides of that, but that's how that works, yeah. Greg Schaefer on Twitter. No, Zach is fun to watch. Hopefully he continues to shine. But Jimmer dominated college basketball games for an entire season. Zach's had a nice couple of preseason games. Yeah, if Zach, if Zach gets this going in the regular season and the Jets like have a winning record, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a fun what's going to be really interesting to follow is and again it's only preseason but all of the highly drafted quarterbacks have had good preseasons we're, I'm wondering if we're watching the next sort of when you look back the era of look look at the quarterbacks that were drafted in this you know maybe, what I mean maybe they they have that potential our elite voice of the day is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort Chase Cole on Facebook Jimmer was a college phenom and his following was insane Zach Wilson can't compare to Jimmer's college career Naismith leading score in the country etc on the other hand Zach will likely be better in the pros and that's where most of his fame will, will come from great well said that's why you're the elite voice of the day Today's Rise and Shoutouts are presented by Mountain America Credit Union, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Shout-out to our guy Trevin Nell, who got married. Congratulations. Uh, excellent reception. Food was great. There was a billionaire there. That was cool. And uh, Brett Kiesel and Jim McMahon hung out. Brett Kiesel tweeted, Finally got to meet one of my idols growing up at the Hall of Fame at BYU Football Brother. Happy birthday, champ. Jim McMahon! A couple of Super Bowl champs. And Brett Kiesel, of course, got blown to smithereens in the Dark Knight Rises. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty cool. How about a rising shout out to week zero? It's coming up. Explain what that means. The week zero is there's five games this Saturday in college football. It's not officially week one, so they're calling it week zero. We made it. We got five games. It's here. It's week. All it is the, game week in college football. All of them suck, but we got to week zero. <laughs> Our thanks to today's guest, Clark Barrington. That's it. It's a harsh take. Nebraska right and Illinois, you excited about that one? Look, when those two teams get together. Southern conversation Utah, Standard they State. The conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use hashtag BYUSN. Sorry to you guys. No time for Dennis. Uh, for Jason, I'm Jerem. Shout out to Bryn Porter. See you tomorrow for more BYUSN. Go Cougars.